This man said for House Salvador. The Salvador militiaman bends down and picks up a huge rock on the ground. What you gonna do? Did you hit King Clint? Oh my God! Yo! <laughs> that man hit me with a rock! <laughs> What's up, y'all? We back. Episode 28, Dawn of an Era. We almost done with this, y'all. <laughs> almost. Okay, y'all, look. King Clint is all laid up with Catherine. Why would he do that? That's a Salvador he stuck it in. <laughs> is this why Catherine came to the palace? To become an empress alongside the queen just to gang up on me? Why the hell would the king even sleep with her, though? Seriously, all it takes is one pretty blonde to forget about Lord Rick and his army. Right. Look at them. King Cleta said, wait, Jess, what's going on? Probably not a good idea to question him right now. If that cunning blonde gets suspicious about our plan, I don't even want to imagine what would happen. Okay, apologies for disturbing your night attendance, your majesty. I was just here to get my vellums for the night. Look at him. Look at, look at him. Guilty. <laughs> Completely bewildered by the situation he's in, King Cletus is at a loss for words. Without another look, you silently reach behind them and grab the pile of paper sitting next to the bed. Look at you. <laughs> King Cletus said, get dressed, Catherine Salvador. She said, yes, your majesty. Y'all look at them. <laughs> he said, now, I need to know. What happened last night? Oh, you know what happened? She said, you had a lot of wine last night, your majesty. We, the young Salvador blushes. He said, keep going. She said, did you remember how it started, your majesty? With a deep, confused frown and a severe headache, King Cletus tries to put the pieces back together. Okay, remember it. Look at them drinking and stuff, y'all. It's crazy. He said, hmm, such immense bitterness in this wine. Yet I want nothing more but to drown in it right now. She said, it's amazing how such sweet grapes can turn into a bitter drink through time. He said, you know exactly what I was thinking, Catherine. Look at him drinking this stuff. She said, I seen the way you look at Madam Jess, your majesty. Just remember, even after a sweet grape has turned into a bitter wine, you can still enjoy it. He said, how can I enjoy it when all that wine does is choking me? Every time I wanted to take a sip, I ended up choking, Catherine. She said, maybe you just need a short time apart from the wine, your majesty. It's like having the same food every day. As good as the food is, you grow tired of it. He said, I'll never grow tired of Jess. Listen to him talking about me, y'all. <laughs> she the only woman I can see myself looking at every day. Look at him in love. Look at him talking about me to the, to the number two. You know what I'm saying? Listening to her voice every time she speaks and admiring her smile all day. She makes everything in the world better, Catherine. I just want to hold her in my arms and give her everything I have. Tell her everything will be all right. I'd have given her the whole world, Catherine. Why is she pushing me away? She said, let me pour some more wine for you, your majesty. She said, if I may offer my opinion on this, your majesty, Madam Jess is an empress. I'm sure she does love you as her king. It's the duty of an empress to devote her heart to her king, after all. He said, you weren't there when she protected me with her life, girl. What we have is different. We're not just a king and an empress. Catherine said, please have a drink, your majesty. Y'all look at her roofing him, you know? She said, you know how a good horse is trained, your majesty? He said, how is that related? <laughs> she said, a couple ages back, father spent a lot of gold coins to get a Heralian war horse. It was of a rare breed with beautiful silver fur and long legs. It was so fast it could reach the outer skirts before father even finished his cup of tea. Father loved it so much, he even built the horse a luxurious stable and fed it the best kind of food as it rested on soft grass every day. And then one day, when he wanted to show off his war horse in a dinner event, it could barely run faster than one of our farm horses. Good things can be spoiled, your majesty. He's saying, are you saying Jess is treating me like that because I spoiled her? She said, I'm in no place to speak of that, your majesty. He said, you can be honest with me, girl. She said, all I'm saying is women are complicated, your majesty. I think some things are just meant to be and shouldn't be forced. He said, I see. I need another drink. Catherine said, of course, your majesty. Yo, listen to this. <laughs> this girl is good. I, I give her credit. She is really good. King Cleta said, I remember talking about Jess. Then I drank a lot of wine. What happened after that? She said, you kept talking after that, your majesty. You told me about how you loved the way Madam Jess stood up for her people. 
Then you said something about her grace inspiring the commoners to be strong. You also told me how you punished her grace for being disrespectful. And she was so stubborn that she refused to eat your food or drink your water. You couldn't bear the thought of her suffering and ended up copying the rules yourself. Oh, my God. He done told the whole plot of the story, y'all. Oh, my God. <laughs> he said, I don't even remember telling you that. That's crazy. I was the only person who knew about that. Even Jess doesn't know. Well, I just got drunk and I spent the night sleeping on the bed. That was all, right? <laughs> Catherine said, your majesty, you got so drunk you started addressing me. As you are my king, you are entitled to be served by any woman in the palace. And I was trained for night attendance, so look at him, y'all. <laughs> she said, I'm yours now, your majesty. King Cleta said, bloody hell. Y'all crazy. It's wild. She said, I'm so sorry, your majesty. I was just, he said, I need some time alone. Leave me. She said, yes, your majesty. Oh, my God. That's crazy. Y'all crazy. Look at Mara, y'all. Catherine said, good morning, sis. <laughs> Is everything all right? She said, I don't know, Catherine. Why don't you tell me? I woke up with one hell of a headache. Then I realized my lady-in-waiting wasn't in her chamber all night. I heard from the guardsman that his majesty never left my estate either. Ooh. <laughs> so why don't you tell me, little sister? Is everything all right? Catherine said, I, his majesty got drunk last night, your majesty. I could not disobey. Look at, <laughs> look at her. Mara said, father didn't see you here to keep me company, did he? You came here for a whole different reason. Catherine said, sis, it's not. She said, shut up. <laughs> shut up. All y'all shut up. Oh my God. Queen Mar, what, y'all, <laughs> this queen Mar reaches into her pocket and empties three packs of colored powder on the table three separated piles three different colors y'all what is this even the very slick Catherine salvador is out of words right now mara said i was hoping you'd be honest with me being my sister and all i'm so disappointed in you girl Catherine said you searched my chamber mara said i may be getting old but i'm still perceptive mara said i mixed the very same powder myself and almost got rid of jess you really think you could use the salvador recipes without me knowing <laughs> and there I was trying to make sure you wouldn't waste away in the palace like me the advisor's son was such a good match for you too right she didn't already bust it wide for him she didn't tell you that though Catherine said I'm sorry sister Mara said don't call me that <laughs> don't call me that you trash girl you don't get to call me that no more not after what you done to me you knew about Veli and you still decided to do this to me right Catherine said, your majesty, father wants you to take over my ruby tiara, then you shall have it. For our house, I'll make sure you get it. But you are not my sister. Not anymore. Catherine said, I had no choice, your majesty. Mara said, you did have a choice, girl. You did. I, on the other hand, didn't. At any rate, this is your fight now. I wish you luck, Catherine Salvador. Oh, my God. Y'all look at the powder on the table. <laughs> Catherine Salvador never had a chance to grow affection towards her older sister. But that still doesn't take away the fact that the queen was one of the only people in the world who genuinely cared about her well-being. Now she can no longer be with the man who loves her. The man she's trying to be associated with don't really care about her. The only family she had that cared more about her as a person than the glory of her house just walked away without another look. That's when Catherine Salvador realized she has nothing now. That's crazy. You brought it on yourself, though, girl. Okay, meanwhile, why would that man sleep with a Salvador? <laughs> why would he do that? He has a palace full of beautiful empresses, and he chose to do it with a Salvador when we this close to bringing them down. He crazy. Catherine is pretty, and she writes poems. What do I expect? She's like Miss Universe material. Every man wants to tap that. <laughs> Not tap that. Look at King Cletus coming to grovel. I don't care about you. I don't care about you. <laughs> King Cletus said, Jess, something you need. He said, I had a lot of wine last night. I just want to let you know, I was not myself. And I said, there's no need for an explanation, bro. You just wanted to put it, put it where you wanted to put it. You were entitled to lay with any woman in this palace, even though Catherine is a Salvador. It don't take away the fact that she's very pretty. He said, you are the only desirable woman in my eyes, Jess. I guess I just, 
I just want to assure you that I didn't change my mind about the Salvadors. I made a mistake last night. It won't happen again. I said, well, now Catherine has done her first night attendance. Is she going to be an empress too? He said, actually, I'm not sure what to do about her yet. With everything we've been planning, promoting her will just complicate things. I said, you're just going to keep her as the queen's lady in waiting? He said, for now, despite the crimes of her house, Catherine doesn't seem like a bad person. After everything is over, maybe I'll just let her live the rest of her life as a peasant. She's very talented, but there's no place for a Salvador in the palace. She'll have to go. Okay, as long as you don't let your libido decide her fate this time, right? I said, what about Lord Rick and Queen Mara? He said, Lord Rick has to die, no doubt, but Mara... He said she was not a good queen, but she spent ages trying to be a good wife to me. I'll probably spare her life and just exile her. Look, she deserved way worse than a mere exile after what she did to Solana. She needs a choke slam and a pedigree and the people's elbow along with a drop kick. Because I've been trying to drop kick her since episode one. You know what I'm saying? If only the physician would call her out. Right, I messed that up. <laughs> but then she'll live to see me wearing the ruby tiara in her face. I said, of course, your majesty. I respect your decision. He said, I'm glad to hear that. At any rate, I know you're going to recruit new people for the militia today. I want you to head south this time. I said, south? How far do I go? He said, there are some villages down south. The villagers are mostly farmers and able-bodied. I want you to try and recruit them all. I said, I ain't been down south before, but I guess Josh will know the way. He said, Josh ain't been there either. He won't know where to go. Just look for the old abandoned tower there. It's the highest point in Ethania. Very easy to spot. Oh, the highest point? I need that. Wait a minute. The highest point in Ethania isn't one of the mountains. It's the tower. The glider in the tower. I gotta check it out. I said, I understand. I'll head out right away. He said, well, how's Salvador gone and this army Rick brings us? We just need to train all our people to fight. Eventually, Gregolia will not threaten Ethania anymore. Okay. <laughs> he said, well, then carry on. All right. You came in here to me. What you talking about? Carry on. <laughs> you carry on. All right, y'all. In the meantime, look at Catherine. A troubled Catherine attempted to steal her mind with her favorite piece of literature. Okay. What's that call her? <laughs> What's wrong with you? Oh, my God. <laughs> What's wrong with you? I know you ain't pregnant. Not after one night, girl. Guilt, repulsion, despair. Only the young Salvador knows her own struggle. Born as a Salvador, Catherine cares for nothing more than the glory of her house. Despite all the books she's read and all the deepest thoughts she's always kept to herself, quietly and slowly, Catherine Salvador cleans up the mess she just made. As the warm tears run down her cheeks and then drop by drop, landing on the floor, she just wiped clean. Okay, not you crying. <laughs> Girl, I don't care about you. She made her choice, right? There's no going back. The road ahead is only gonna get rockier and rockier. Girl, you ain't built for this life. You ain't built for this for this savage life like I am, you know what I'm saying? Okay, now it's time for her to put a Salvador on the throne. With or without her sister. She has to be ready to face everything alone. After all, she's a Salvador. That's her only purpose. Okay, look at Oliver, y'all. <laughs> Oliver said Catherine. Catherine shudders at the sound of Oliver's voice. After a moment of hesitation, she finally turns around to face the young man. Not the young man. <laughs> she said, do you need something, sir? <laughs> Not sir. Right. Oliver said, sir, you've been avoiding me almost two fortnights. And now you won't even call me by my name no more. She said, with all due respect, sir, <laughs> it wouldn't do either of us any good to do so. He said, I know, girl. I heard about what happened last night. Dang, you opening your legs all around the palace now. That's crazy. Catherine said, why are you still here? I'm officially his majesty's. We shouldn't even be talking anymore. He said, father is pressuring me into proposing to Lady Diana. Okay. <laughs> she said, like you said, Lady Diana is one of the most well-read women in Ethania. I hope she'll bring you the happiness you deserve. <laughs> He said, I also told you Lady Diana didn't understand anything I wrote. How can a woman bring me happiness when she can't even read between the lines? She said, give her time. Explain your writing to her. Eventually, she'll grasp your subtlety. He said, what if I only want the woman who could understand me without my explanation? She said, then you're going to die alone. Oh, my God. <laughs> Oliver said, Catherine, please, don't do this, girl. I can see how much you hate all this. I don't want to marry Lady Diana and you don't want to be an empress either. Run away with me, girl. 
We can go to Law Direct. They have the biggest library of all five kingdoms. Imagine all the books we can read together. Catherine said, all the ancient scrolls of the greatest poets in history. We could sit under a tree and write our own poems. Y'all, she thinking about it. She ain't gonna do it. <laughs> right. Unfortunately, life is never that simple, Oliver. I cannot simply abandon my house and run off. He said, yeah, you can, girl. <laughs> of course you can. El Salvador is not going to die out just because your next kin won't be royal. Live for yourself, not the short-term glory of your house. She said, I can't do this. I'm sorry, Oliver. I'm no longer the woman you know. I hope you'll see the goodness I lack in Lady Diana. Okay, y'all, look at me. Look at me in tank top. I said, I can see the tower from here. If we make haste, we should be able to return before sundown. He said, you really want to go home, don't you? <laughs> I said, you got no idea, Josh. I said, don't worry, I ain't leaving right now. I still got work to do. Until then, I'm not going nowhere. He said, I understand. Be honest with his majesty. That's all I ask of you. I said, I will after my work here is done, Josh. He said, at any rate, we should keep going before we run out of time. All right, back at the Athenian Palace. King Cleo said, no, Mara, I can't simply give your ruby tiara to Catherine just because I got drunk last night. <laughs> I appreciate what you're trying to do, but that's not how you became a queen, and it will never be a proper way to crown the ruby tiara. She said, I ain't getting no younger, your majesty. You need a younger queen who can give you a progeny. Catherine is young, beautiful, and well-read. She'll be the queen that I failed to be. He said, it would be highly improper to replace a queen just like that, Mara. Plus, Jess is going to get the ruby tiara. What you talking about? <laughs> nah, he didn't say that. Moreover, producing another progeny is not at the top of my concern right now. She said, I understand it's not the traditional way, but it will be good for Ethania. Please think about it, bro. He said, I'll take some time to consider it. Until then, I'll hold off on promoting Catherine. Even as a crown concubine, Velia was never really respected as one. I don't want the same fate for Catherine. Catherine said, I understand your majesty. I don't care for titles. I'll be content to keep serving by Her Majesty's side as her lady-in-waiting. <laughs> Look at Vara. Okay, Cleo said, you all right, my queen? She said, oh, it's just my headache, Your Majesty. <laughs> I should retire to my chamber. Look at them beefing, y'all. That's crazy. King Cleo said, rest well, my beloved. <laughs> King Cleo said, Catherine, what happened last night was unexpected and improper. Because of that very reason... I'm going to hold off on promoting you until the rumor dies down. I understand this is unfair to you, but I'll find a way to make it up to you. It does seem unfair to Catherine, but to the young Salvador, she's got everything she needed for the scheme to work. One way or another, she'll get what she wants. It's only a matter of time. She said, I completely understand your majesty. Please don't worry. I only wish to be by my sister's side. I shall retire to my chamber as well. Yo. <laughs> okay, look at Catherine. Upon entering her chamber, Catherine noticed a letter along with some beautiful white flowers sitting next to the door. Catherine said, in despair, I wander in the spring shower. Lying on the side of the muddy road was the beautiful white flower. In spite of the corrupted world, she shall not tarnish, she shall not discolor. Please, my blessed angel, take my hand, for I am your caller. With a heavy sigh, Catherine picks up the white flowers on the floor. That's probably from Oliver, y'all. With the fallen petals come the dreadful autumn. I asked the withering flower, for whom did you blossom? In hushed whispers, she said her goodbyes and descended to the bottom. As she decays into the cruel world, she shall finally be forgotten. Well, that's sad. Oliver, I'm so sorry. Oliver really wanted to run away with you, girl. That's crazy. All right, later that day, okay, a tower on a mountain. I can see why this is the highest point of Ethania now. He said, should we rest here a bit, your grace? I said, nah, I'm good. Let's keep walking. Look at my heels, y'all. <laughs> I need to make it back before sundown or his majesty will get suspicious. He said, of course, your grace. Quietly, you take the lead and head uphill towards the tower. You can feel your heart racing faster with every step you make. Knowing you're just this close to going home and when you're ready, nobody gonna stop you. Just like how Wade described in the journal... The glider was hidden right inside the tower. Y'all look at that glider. <laughs> it was built from the salvaged plane parts, making this glider the one and only way for you to get home. The only missing component is the Zubian silk elliptical wing. The question is, are you ready to take the leap of faith when the time comes? All right, thank you for coming with me to the tower tank top. I couldn't have found everything I need without your help. He said, of course, your grace. 
You've done so much for his majesty, for Ethania. The least I can do is help you find your way home. I said, I owe you everything, Josh. Thank you for saving my life multiple times and helping me get home. I'm going to tell everybody in my world about you. He said, I'm just a royal guard of Ethania. I don't even have a house or a last name. Yeah, you do. You got your name tank top. Nobody will remember me. I said, you have no idea how remarkable you actually are. I'll never forget about you and Solana. You're a good friend, Josh. He said, you honor me, your grace. I said, it's getting late. Let's head inside. All right, y'all, look at us. And just like that, the second batch of militia has started their training. King Cletus was right about these farmers. They spend their entire lives farming, milling flour. Strength building is the least of their concern. What they need to learn is how to utilize their strength. It's comforting to know they'll soon be able to fend for themselves. And your job here will be done. Tank Top has been teaching them all sorts of lethal fighting moves. His techniques might not be ideal for militia training, but it'll do for now. As long as you pop in once in a while and remind the villagers that a brutal neck twist is only a last resort measure. <laughs> Death is never an ideal solution to solve a problem. Unless it's Mara, because we hate her. All right, y'all, be back in my chamber the next morning. Raven, <laughs> why Raven always run into my room with something? Raven said, your grace. <laughs> Every time. The sun ain't even up, Raven. She said, no, your grace, it's Lord Rick. He back with more than a thousand men. They all heading towards the palace right now. The king and queen are getting ready to head out and meet him. Oh, shoot. I said, please go and notify his majesty. I need to do something real quick. Then I'll meet him outside the palace. She said, right away, your grace. Okay. All right, y'all, that's it. This is the day I avenge Solana, Period. In order for this plan to work, I need to be convincing. I should probably choose the best look that represents me. Oh, what, y'all? Do I wear my madam attire or my militia outfit? We wearing my militia outfit because I'm ready to go to war. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. We wearing this, yeah, because I, I need to be able to drop kick somebody. You know what I'm saying? We sticking with this. And I'm finna tie my hair up. This is it. This is my look, y'all. This is my look. I got to have my hair pinned back, but still cute. You know what I'm saying? For when I drop kick Mara, I, my hair won't be all over the place. And then I need to have my militia outfit on because we're going to war. All right, time to do this. Let's go. All right, meanwhile, outside the palace. All right, look at the militia, y'all. <laughs> Lord Rick said, 1,203 militiamen from all 23 houses of Ethania are at your service, your majesty. King Cletus said, I've been anxiously awaiting your return, Lord Rick. How was your journey? Are you all right? He said, I was well treated by all the houses. Although it's a long journey, I'm well, your majesty. He said, I'm glad to hear that. I would not want the militia commander of Ethania to be worn out before the celebration. Lord Rick said, you honor me, your majesty. Thank you. King Cletus said, you've done a great service to Ethania. Your deeds shall be written down in all our records. For every Ethanian should know about the great contributions of House Salvador. King Cleta said, as the king of Ethania, I hereby pronounce Lord Rick of House Salvador, the first militia commander of Ethania. Look at everybody. <laughs> that man ain't have no shirt on, y'all. With a pleased smile, Lord Rick bows to King Cletus graciously. Wealth, power, and exultation among the commoners. House Salvador finally has them all. Just one more thing is needed for the final goal. One more little thing. <laughs> Look at me, y'all. Oh, shit, that's the green scarf man. Just in time. Josh said, your grace. I said, I brought the green scarf. King Cletus notices your arrival among the cheering villagers. You can see the uneasiness in his eyes hiding behind his diplomatic smile. Okay, this can go either really well or extremely disastrously. <laughs> Okay, I'm nervous as hell. Let's do it, Jess. Noticing the tension in your eyes, he shoots you a questioning look. All right, chill, Jess. Nothing gonna go wrong, girl. After a slight hesitation, you return King Cletus' gesture with an affirming nod. All right, this is it. This is it, y'all. King Cletus gives us a reassuring nod. Then he turns back around, facing Lord Rick with a gracious smile. King Cletus said, the militia commander is the protector of Ethania. You have great responsibilities, Lord Rick. You shall bear the trust of the King of Ethania and all our people. He said, I ain't gonna disappoint you, bro, bro. King Cleta said, I'm pleased to hear that. Now, in order to officialize your new title, you need to perform your first task. King Cleta said, Madam Jess, bring forth the green scarf. I said, yes, your majesty. <laughs> bring him here. 
I said, the criminal is here, your majesty. The green scarf mercenary said, hurrah, me see king, king powerful. <laughs> King Cleta said, as the militia commander of Ethania, I now task you with deciding the proper judgment for this green scarf mercenary. This man was one of the green scarves who broke into the palace to assassinate me. And he is the last surviving member of them all. The green scarves embarked upon the downfall of Ethania. It's only fitting for the protector of Ethania to mark the end of our darkest time and establish justice in front of the holy Thania. A new era shall start today, Lord Rick. Look at him, y'all. He the one hired him. <laughs> the villager man said, drown him. This lady said, hang him. Exile, exile. That man ain't got on no shirt, y'all. <laughs> this lady said, whip him till he can't move. Right. The green scar said, no, no. Me no die. Me be good. <laughs> mercy, mercy. Silver blonde old man. King Cleta said, the choice is yours. Now you must act. What you thinking about, Lord Rick? Rick said, well, what the green scarves did was unjustifiable. The green scarf man said, it's the silver blonde hair man. It's him. <laughs> Bingo. Apologies, Commander. He has a hard time controlling his tongue after all he's been through. Please don't mind him. Lord Rick said, I see. Look at him. Look at him shifty eyes, y'all. Lord Rick said, as I was saying, a criminal like him? The green scarf mercenary said, no, pretty lady. It's his voice. He's the silver blonde old man who came with gold. He gave us many, many gold bars. King Cleta said, don't you dare accuse my faithful commander of treason, filth. Mercenary said, no, big mighty king, me no lie. Old man came to our house with carts of gold bars and said, give me the heads of two people and you shall have all the gold bars you want. Name your price. There's nothing in the world I cannot offer. Look at him speaking in complete sentences now, y'all. <laughs> He ain't been talking like this for the whole episode, but here you go. Tell it all to T. As the green scarf mercenary mimicked what Laura said, the whole street went into an uncomfortable silence. Even from the crazed green scarf's fanatic tone, everyone could hear Lord Rick's arrogant tone and House Salvador's heavily retroflex way of speaking. You turn around to look at the militiamen. A lot of the militiamen submitted to Lord Rick unwillingly. They either gave in to fear, power, or the promise of gold coins. Now, false hope has turned into disappointment. While fear and respect have developed into anger and disgust, just like that, Lord Rick has lost his biggest leverage. Just like that. That's crazy. Okay, bravo, you green scarf freak. <laughs> I said nothing in the world you cannot offer, huh? Who else but the Lord of Salvador could make such a promise? King Cleta said, that does sound a lot like you, my commander. Lord Rick said, I ain't got nothing to do with this. I don't know what y'all talk about. I said, I've been wondering for so long... How could the green scars know when and where to ambush us? His majesty picked the time and place and only informed the royal guards and high rank empresses. So I did some searching and found a letter in her majesty's estate. This letter clearly proved Rick was indeed informed of the inspection tour details. There's a saying, a thief within a house is hard to guard against. The ambush could only happen because Lord Rick had help from within the palace. The call is coming from inside the house. You turn around and give Queen Mara a meaningful look. I said, as Queen of Ethania, you already have everything, girl. What more could you want? Look at you. <laughs> she said, I ain't got nothing to do with this. <laughs> I said, girl, I got the letter right here. Shut up. Quit lying. Mara said, I did tell father about the time and place of the inspection tour, but I had nothing to do with the ambush, your majesty. I said, so you did admit they've told Lord Rick about the inspection tour. Catherine said, if I may say something, your grace. Isn't thievery inside the royal quarter punishable by death? I said, I had a valid reason to search in Her Majesty's estate. Catherine said, of course, Your Grace, but Her Majesty's involvement in such a crime is still a speculation. Your thievery, however, is a certainty. According to the Athenian laws, judgment should be given according to the time such crimes were performed. King Cleo said, given the circumstances, what Madam Jess did was understandable. Right. Catherine said, are you disregarding the law of Athenia in front of all Athenian people, Your Majesty? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Everyone knows how much you adore Madam Jess, but to bend the law for a woman, oh my God, y'all, this, this girl tried to turn the people against us. <laughs> okay, well, Her Majesty admitted to the crime, girl. Catherine said, you still committed thievery prior to that, Your Grace. Mara said, yes, Madam Jess, what you took from me was my personal correspondence. Okay, I'm sorry to disappoint y'all too, but... You lift up the piece of paper in your hand and flip it over to show everyone. Mara said, a blank paper? <laughs> yes, your majesty, a blank paper. All I took from her majesty's estate was blank vellum. 
something I was entitled to take for my madam duties. Mara said, you tricked me. I did. I can agree on that. Look at you. <laughs> Apologies for tricking you, your majesty. The punishment of disrespecting the queen as my madam is three slaps to my left cheek. All yours, your majesty. Would you like to do it now? <laughs> Y'all, Queen Mara has never been more terrified by a smiley face in her whole life. At this point, there's nothing she can say or do to defend her house or even herself. Even the cunning Catherine Salvador can see today is the end of House Salvador, period. Kay Cleta said, I trusted you, Mara. I may not have been the best husband to you, but how can you plot to kill me and Madame Dolores, girl? Mara said, no, your majesty. I never asked for any of this. Lord Rick said, I'm the one who asked Mara about the inspection tour, your majesty. I raised my daughters to be obedient. That was not Mara's fault. My daughters had nothing to do with any of this. I placed the contract on you and that blind wench. Hang me or stone me all you want. Please leave my daughters alone. King Cleta said, you just committed treason, Lord Rick. You know what that mean, right? Lord Rick said, I understand the punishment for treason, your majesty. However, my daughters have been in the palace. They had no part in all this. Mara loves you dearly, bro. She would never hurt you. My daughters do not deserve death. Please take my life solely. I'm the only person responsible. I say get them all out of here. You know what I'm saying? The militia said, traitors, hang them all right now. Right. <laughs> hang the Salvadors. Hang them all. Take them to the rope room. You know what I'm saying? Lord Rick said, please, your majesty, have mercy on my daughters. Don't do it, King Cletus. Choke slam them. Choke slam them right now. King Cletus said, very well, I'll spare their lives. But you, Lord Rick, you have committed the worst crime. I hereby revoke your militia commander title and sentence you to death. You only had it for like five minutes, bro. That's crazy. <laughs> He said, I accept my punishment, your majesty. King Cleta said, royal guard, bring me my sword. Come on, tank top. Catherine said, no. Oh, Catherine, you can get swung on too, girl. You can get swung on too. Catherine said, please, your majesty, don't kill my father. King Cleta said, get out of my way, girl, before I drop kick you too. Catherine said, I'm pregnant, your majesty. Y'all, I told y'all that lady was pregnant. <laughs> I'm carrying your child. Oh, my God. Y'all. Lord Rick said, Catherine. Oh, my God. Of course. Of course she is. King Cleta said, that don't change nothing, girl. <laughs> Unless you want to commit treason as well. Don't get in my way. Catherine said, please, your majesty. Okay, as much as I hate the Salvadors, this is a woman carrying a child. I don't care about that. Y'all. <laughs> I do not care. My name Benny and I ain't in it. I ain't saying nothing. I don't care about none of these people. I ain't saying nothing. People died because of him. He deserves no mercy. How do we actually drop kick Mara? I, I, wanted, I want you to kill Mara too. Catherine said, Father, don't leave us. He said, it's all right, little bird. I'm so proud of you too. Mara said, I'm so sorry, Father. He said, take care of your little sister and her baby. Mara said, I will, Father. I don't care about them. <laughs> Y'all, the game tried to make me plead for him. I'm not pleading for that man. He said, I understand I'm at no place to make requests, but could you please have my daughters escorted back to the palace before we do this? They should not have to see this, your majesty. King Cleta said, Josh, escort Mara and Catherine back to the palace. Catherine said, we'll head back to the palace ourselves, your majesty. Josh should stay here and protect you. He said, very well. Catherine said, farewell, father. Mara said, goodbye, father. Y'all, I don't care about that man. The guy you talk about, plea for, plea for whoever this man is. I don't care. I don't care. Y'all, who is that? Is that the courier? That's some courier. I can't remember who it is. Lord Rick said, I'm ready, your majesty. Slowly but steady. Look at the, <laughs> look at the sword, y'all. Slowly but steadily, King Cletus unsheathes his sword and points it towards Lord Rick. As he feels the cold hard steel against his neck, Lord Rick lets out a heavy sigh. Rather than fear, Lord Rick's eyes are full of regrets and sadness. The once ambitious Salvador Lord only wishes he could live to see the birth of his grandson sitting on the throne. Is he dead? Oh, okay, he is dead. <laughs> a death sentence may seem cruel in your world. Alas, in a world like this one, the end justifies the means. 
good reddits. One Salvador down and two to go. You know what I'm saying? Just one last thing is needed for me to avenge Solana. Or what you running for? This man said for House Salvador. The Salvador militiaman bends down and picks up a huge rock on the ground. What you gonna do? Did you hit King Clint? Oh my God! Yo! <laughs> oh my God! That man hit me with a rock! <laughs> the militia said, avenge our lord. Kill the king and the dark-haired wench. Josh said, go now, your grace. I'll hold him back. Okay, the rock hit you right on the stomach, but you had years of martial arts training. It's a lot of pain, but nothing you can't handle. Oh no, I'm fine, bro, bro. I'm fighting right along with you. Give me that man that hit me with the rock first. I got, I need my lick back. You know what I'm saying? The militia said, defend our king, comrades. Right. Y'all, it's a war outside. Look at the green scarf man running away. <laughs> Y'all. While the terrified green scarf took advantage of the chaos and ran off into the distance, King Cletus drew his sword, ready to take on the traitors himself. After all, it's just a small group of rebels. They can't do much damage. Or so it seems. Well, parrying attack in the open does seem easy. As long as you can see it. Yo, who is this with the arrow? Before you know it, an arrow is flying towards you, making a sharp tearing sound. Although Josh can hear the arrow coming, he is too far to do anything about it right now. Is it King Cletus? There are villagers standing behind me. If I dodge this, somebody will die. King Cletus said, watch out, Jess. With the swing of his sword, King Cletus slices the incoming arrow in half. Oh my God. What the hell just happened? As confused as you are, the villagers did see everything clearly. A madam almost sacrificed herself to protect the commoners. The villager woman said, run, your grace, we'll protect you. People, let's show these Salvador thugs what we learned. Oh yeah, I trained the militia, y'all. <laughs> I said, no, it's too dangerous. She said, you taught us how to fight fearlessly, your grace. We'll be fine. Trust us and let us keep you safe this time. Okay, the Salvadors are just after me and the king. The others should be fine. All right, peace out. Be safe. <laughs> I'll check on y'all afterward. All right, y'all. Look at this. <laughs> Y'all, that's crazy. That man hit me with a rock. That's crazy. Later that day. Okay, Tank Top, you made it out. You made it out, Tank Top. How to riot outside the palace. He said, don't worry. All the Zavador militiamen have been seized. The villagers are safe. They can handle themselves. I found the archers hiding in an alley. Okay, what you do to them? He said, I made sure they wouldn't be a threat anymore. I said, you all right, bro, bro? He said, I'm fine. Thank you for asking. You should get some rest. It's going to be a busy day tomorrow. I said, I know, I know. <laughs> I was just waiting for his majesty. He's talking to advisor Arthur right now. Josh said, go get some rest. I'll wait here and let you know when his majesty is ready to see you. With so much going on, this might take all night. Tell me about it. <laughs> all these new militiamen are waiting orders. Then there's a Salvador militia sitting in the dungeon cells. And the queen, she ain't getting away. She is not getting away with this, right? I'm coming for you tomorrow, Mara. <laughs> coming for you, girl. I'll retire to my chamber then. Good night, Josh. Night, tank top. Okay, back at the Salvador estate. Oh, that's the butler, y'all. <laughs> I knew he was somebody. I knew he was somebody, some helper. The butler said, we got to go now, girl. The servant said, what? Our Lord is coming back soon. We got to clean up. <laughs> the butler said, he coming back, girl. Our Lord dead. Ain't no more house, Salvador. The king struck our Lord down himself. He didn't even care about Lady Catherine's pregnancy. The servant said, what? What's happening? What do we do now? He said, house Salvador committed treason. We all getting hanged tomorrow. There's no time to explain. We got to get out of here, girl. <laughs> okay, look at, the, look at the soldiers, y'all. All right, the soldier said, well, we better hurry up, bro. <laughs> Indeed, his majesty will want to know about this. We'll take Lord Rick's horses and move out after dark. Without the snow on the road, we'll be back in Gregoli in a couple days. Y'all, look at them. This is crazy. 